quite a long time. Uh, last night's board meeting went on for quite some time. And, um, and um, a, a lot of information was shared. What I'm going to be sharing with you all today is information specific to uh, the high school and specific to the opening of, 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 the, of the building um, in September. And I'm going to do it in, in, in basically two steps. Um, the, Oh my God! Put the document up on screen. We'll be going through the document together. I think that many of the questions. I would ask that everybody mute themselves um, so that background noise is reduced. I'm going to be doing most of the talking. I will. I will go through the building plan, and then after the building plan, um, I've I've received. Um, about four four pages of questions. I think many of the questions that have been asked, and uh, the time I'm with uh, the opening plan, but uh, there'll be time for Q and A afterwards as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, at least it should, and um, I will I will. Uh, We'll hope that you see the building plan. I think people should see that at this point. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's on. Uh, I'll be reading it aloud. If we could uh, mute our microphones, please. That way we're eliminating background noise and everybody gets to hear the same thing in the same way. Okay. Thanks very much. And community member participated as member of several district level committees that met two or three times per week during June and July. As a result of their engagement and effort, we've developed the following plan for reopening. <laughs> Horrible text. High school building plan or students, staff, and families will be notified of all adjustments and changes. Family may have traveled or may be traveling to one of the states on the governor's restricted travel list. They'll need to self quarantine for 14 days before coming to school. And I'll begin with family and community engagement. Weekly updates pertaining to daily instruction, staff, student, and staff safety, along with announcements regarding necessary adjustments to the Limbrook High School reopening plan, will be shared via traditional mail. Email, phone message, text messages via DAP and through Schoology, the district learning management system. Information is accessible in the languages spoken at home using the Google Translate. What the fuck are you doing? I'm protocols with hand social distancing and respiratory hygiene. Shut the fuck up. All students and staff and visitors will be encouraged through written and verbal communication to adhere to CDC and Department of Health guidance regarding the use of personal. With Mrs. Kathy Hetrick and Mrs. Diane O'Brien are the COVID-19 safety coordinators 
And our responsibilities include continuous compliance with all aspects of the Limburg High School reopening plan, as well as any phased in reopening activities necessary to allow for operational issues resolved before activities return to normal. Morning. Morning. Parents and guardians to observe for signs of illness in their child that require staying home from school. If we could mute our microphones, please. Mr. Rennes, I know that you, you probably have a function as the host to mute all. Students and staff will be subject. All of this. The school nurse is not available. Ill students and staff will be sent home for follow up with a health care provider. Students or staff with a temperature, signs of illness, and or a positive response to the questionnaire will be sent directly to the dedicated isolation area in the nurse's office, where students and staff will be supervised prior to being picked up or otherwise sent home. Students and staff... Oh my God. All parents will be instructed to maintain social distance of at least six feet whenever possible. If students and staff who are at high risk or who live with a person at high risk will receive accommodations to the extent possible. Again, I would ask people, please mute your microphones. Mr. Reynas, uh, may I suggest if you can on the participants, we should have the option to mute all. He doesn't hear me. Um, um, adequate supplies of masks for staff students who should get their masks and PPE for youth by school health professionals will be maintained. Um, just want to uh, I think I think I think adequate supplies of masks for staffs and students who forgot their masks and PPE for use by school health professionals will be maintained. And Liberal High School will be cleaned and disinfected thoroughly each day following CDC guidance. With regard to the building facilities in all classrooms, student desks will be socially distanced. Social distancing will be practiced and reinforced to ensure distances are consistently followed. Students will be required to wear a mask throughout the day. Students' desks will be configured facing the same direction. And hand sanitizer and wipes will be available in every classroom and common area throughout the building. 
We learned last night. Come here, Ruby. We'll have us and um, everybody will be masked as well. Student uh, clear poly polycarbonate shields will be used at all teacher desks, as well as student desks, and no longer just an instance where students are at high risk. Access to laboratories will be monitored for the purposes of maintaining social distance and good hygiene. Only one student at a time may use the lavatories. Clear polycarbonate shields will also be installed in the main office and the guidance office at building entrance monitor stations and at other key areas in the building. The sharing. Was by the classroom teacher only. The elevator will be limited to the minimum number of students and staff possible, meaning only one staff member or one student at a time may use the elevator. Masks must be worn by everyone physically capable of wearing a mask in order to use the elevator. All male and orders cannot be dropped off at any time because we don't we can't have any number of individuals going into a drop box or anything to retrieve those because we just don't know uh, 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 about everyone's health in that regard high school staff will utilize the room and the second floor faculty room for lunch each day Markings will also be installed on the walkways leading to the high school entrances, reminding students to maintain social distancing as they queue up, waiting to be screened each morning. Please maintain social distancing and patience waiting to enter the building. With regard to technology and connectivity, the Limbrook Public Schools has partnered with BOCES to provide high-speed bandwidth throughout all, through Altice and has ordered enough devices so that each child in the district can have one. Supply chain issues, as you know, have delayed delivery of some of the devices. However, the district will provide its available supply to families who do not have sufficient devices to conduct remote education. Students will participate in daily live interaction instruction in both remote and blended models hosted by platforms such as X and Teams. Students will demonstrate their knowledge of learning standards through the various formative and summative assessments Hosted in our learning management system, Schoology, including cumulative projects and portfolios, unit chapter tests, scheduled and impromptu quizzes, extra exit tickets, online polls, submitted homework and assignments, and recorded or documented performance tasks. If there is a time when students do not have devices or high speed access, Paper copies of these instructional and assessment materials will be made available to all students, except in instances of the building being on entirely remote learning if we're for some reason have to close for an extended amount of time. With regard to teaching and learning, regardless of the means of delivery, daily instruction, of course, content will be aligned to the New York State learning standards. Teachers, parents, students, and community mem members recognize that for the 2021 school year and each school year, continuity of instruction, student engagement with course content, and the maintenance of content-focused and daily student-teacher interaction are paramount. Access to teachers, instructional materials, and course content will be equitable. All students will be able to access instruction and materials during the 2021 school year and will have access to the technical support necessary to, ma to maintain that access. Teachers will provide opportunities for students to seek help with access to and understanding of course content through regularly scheduled extra help sessions and communication between building administration, teachers, parents, guardians, and students must be regular and ongoing. Communication will take place primarily via phone and email and may also include text messaging using the app um, as well as Schoology. With regard to our safety drill procedures, 
Fire drills, lockout drills, lockdown drills, shelter in place drills will be held with modifications ensuring social distancing between persons. Drills may be conducted in a staggered fashion with only some students participating. However, when we do that, we have to have it so that all students eventually participate as well. Um, what is important is students become acquainted with how quickly, how to quickly say and safely exit the building given the circumstance we have. It's not Maintaining social, and finally, maintaining social distancing in an actual emergency that requires evacuation or lockdown may not be possible and should not be the first priority. With regard to school meals, they will be provided at high school daily. For students in attendance, meals will be offered in the form of a grand goal style meal. Students who are not in physical attendance, but who are learning in home environments meals made available in a grab and go format as designated at designated locations outside each building. Students participating in the hybrid educational model will be offered a second grab and go meal for the next day when they when they remotely attend school. The cafeteria and large and small gyms will be used as cafeteria space for the 2021 school year. The large and small gyms will be fitted with hand washing stations. Students will be instructed how to perform hand hygiene before and after eating, and there will be signage throughout the gyms as well as the cafeteria. Um, students will receive periodic instruction not to share food or beverages, and signage regarding the sharing of food and beverages will be posted in all hallways, common areas, and classrooms. And students will be instructed to social distance while consuming meals. And signage regarding the six feet of separation will be posted in the large and small gyms, as well as in the cafeteria. With regard to transportation, as you may know, uh, we have a number of students who do get bused to school, and those are including our students who travel to the Long Island School for the uh, Performing Arts as uh, Barry Tech. And therefore, um, we have this information regarding how uh, uh, students who are being transported will, will operate. Um, all buses used every day will be clean and disinfected once a day. High contact areas must be wiped down after each AM and PM run, depending on the infection and cleaning schedule. And due to its combustible composition, school buses will not be equipped with hand sanitizer. Bus drivers, monitors, attendants, and mechanics must not carry. Must not carry uh, personal bottles of hand sanitizer. Drivers, monitors, attendants, and mechanics must wear a face covering. And students must wear a mask on a school bus if they are physically able. Students who do not have a mask will not be and will be provided with one, of meaning a mask, by the district. Students with a disability, which would prevent them from wearing a mask, will not be forced to do so or be denied uh, to transportation. With regard to boarding and disembarking, students will wear a mask prior to boarding. Masks must be worn at all times by students while on the bus. Students will use the main passenger door to enter. Boarding will take place from the back row to the front row, and disembarkation will be from the first row to the last row to minimize contact. Non-school items are not permitted on the buses, and eating and drinking on the bus is also not permitted. With regard to seating, buses will operate at a reduced capacity, only one child per seat. The seat behind the driver must remain vacant. Social distancing, six feet of spacing must be maintained by all persons while on the bus. With regard to social and emotional well-being, um, folks, as you know, students who were uh, uh, in the middle school in grade eight or in grades nine, 10, and 11 last year, uh, we have not had contact with the students on a regular basis um, since last March. 
their social emotional well-being is of paramount importance as we uh, transition back to school. And we will continue to adhere to every aspect of the K-12 guidance and counseling plan submitted to NYSA. Mm -hmm. And the district and building policies, practices, and procedures for assuring appropriate counseling services will be maintained. There, there will be a continued emphasis on social emotional learning as well as the social emotional well being of all students and staff, looking to aim at climate, cultivating a climate that fosters students' sense of self, safety, and acceptance. And now for the meat and potatoes, our building schedule. For 2020-21, there are three models of instruction available. And these you probably already know. The green model is a full remote instruction model that will follow the exact daily schedule of students who are in school. All classes will be live streamed via Teams or WebEx daily. We have the blue model, which will provide a hybrid model of instruction. Students whose last name begins with letters A to L will alternate each day with students whose last name begins with letters M through Z. And then we have a gold model, which is full in-school instruction each day for students with an IEP who are in any meaning one, two, three or more special classes, as well as for our students in the career development program. Special education teachers in the inclusion classes will Share the screen with the content area teachers and students with an IEP will live stream into ICT classes where space and student safety are prohibited. Laurie? Student lockers will, not, will not be used, will not be used, meaning the hallway and gym, knocker, gym lockers will not be used for this school year. With regard to physical education, all physical education classes will be taught remotely for students. Um, we are looking to have all physical education classes meet um, in classrooms because the gym clearly is being used for other purposes this year. PE classes will consist of activity logs, activities developed for independent activity for the students by the physical education staff, and periodic instruction in maintaining safety and good hygiene both in and out of school. For the 2021 school year, the six day cycle will repeat. We will have day 1A, day 1B, day 2A, day 2B, 3A, 3B, and so on. Students whose last name begins with letters A to L will receive instruction on A days. Students whose last names begin with letters M to Z will receive instruction on B days. This schedule will be available at the high school site and will be shared via email and with all students, staff, and parents. It's important to note that daily instruction is continuous, whether you are in person on a given day or learning remotely. For instructional purposes, being in or out of school <clears throat> simply means that students are receiving instruction either live or remotely on any given day. The arrival time for those with period one classes is between 7 o'clock and 7.30 a.m. The arrival time for those with period two classes is between 7.30 and 8 a.m. And it is recommended students arrive to school using these time slots for period one classes and period two classes. And you see those period one time slots on A and B days and period two slot time slots on A and B days as well. That way, um, the flow of students entering the building is continuous. It doesn't back up, students are not late. Upon arrival and screening, students will remain socially distanced in the holding rooms, which is which are the cafeteria and gyms. And the bell schedule, as you know, will be altered for the school year. All staircases and most hallways will also be one way. Students exiting classrooms will move in one direction, following a one-way path to get to his or her next class. 
and passing time between classes has been extended to allow for this new pattern of movement in the building. Visual aids such as painters tape, stickers, signage, and cones will be utilized to illustrate traffic flow and appropriate spacing to support social distancing. Staircases will be labeled with signage to designate one-way traffic flow. To accommodate the time it will take for students to get from one class to the next, each period will be shortened uh, six minutes, not five minutes. All students, they are home or are coming to school, will follow this bell schedule daily. And the bell schedule for 2021 is there for you. Interestingly, because of the cut in time in classes, we do, the day ends uh, six minutes earlier than usual. And um, therefore, we will have a staggered dismissal time. We will have a staggered dismissal time. We will dismiss students on the first floor at 2.46, a couple of minutes later. The second floor will be dismissed, and then finally the third floor will be dismissed so that um, students uh, maintain social distancing. With regard to uh, daily attendance, all of the students with a free period. Students with a free period. Uh, uh, this is hard. Visit the building and upon re entering and screening, all students are to report to the gym, the small gym, the cafeteria, or library as social distancing permits. With regard to daily attendance, daily attendance will be maintained. As usual, teachers will record student attendance in paraschool each period throughout the school day. Students who are on remote instruction need to have their screen on and be seated in front of their screens live each period. Um, from the student handbook, just so that everybody's aware, I've, I've, I've tagged on um, the requirements regarding uh, attendance at the high school and, and at school in general. Tab absences and tardies and early departures must be accounted for. It is the parent's responsibility to notify the school office before 9.30 a.m. at the start of the school day regarding a child's absence. It is the parent's and student's responsibility to bring a note signed by the parent or guardian to the school office on the first day the student returns to school. Notes must contain specific information. This is all familiar to you because it's essentially uh, uh, the district policy and attendance policy as well. One thing I do want to mention with regard to attendance, we have people who for a variety of reasons uh, may have uh, members of their family need to stay home. Either uh, uh, someone is a, an essential worker and closed and so people have to quarantine and so forth or a child may have the sniffles. They may not have COVID-19, but they have the sniffles. And, uh, but because we are uh, uh, being more precautionary than usual, uh, what we will do um, is we, will, we are working on developing a procedure whereby students who are, um, who are home, either because they're slightly ill or because they need to quarantine, they will be able to, um, uh, remotely access instruction so that they do not lose out on time at school. Um, I'm working with Dr. Lekas and Mr. Fallon and Ms. Ganun. This is going to be a secondary level effort, uh, uh, and uh, we'll be getting something out on paper so that everybody understands that procedure. Once we have it fully in place, we were just working on that. I was talking to Dr. Black just this morning about it. Um, with regard to remote learning and attendance, if the district implements a fully remote learning model, students are responsible for attending live sessions by sitting in front of their screens and being live and visible throughout each lesson. Attendance will be taken during each class period, and if a student is absent, but class assignments for that period are completed, 
that within school days, the student's attendance will be marked present. Support staff will remain connected to our most vulnerable students during a remote learning period. Schools will provide intervention strategies to improve student attendance and interactions. And attendance tracking and intervention measures for students who remain absent will be after standard follow-up and outreach have been exhausted. If schools are to move to a fully remote model, the following plan will be followed. We will have both a structured school day and asynchronous learning opportunities. With regard to a structured school day, announcements will be made each morning at 8.55. There will be five periods of live instruction daily on a rotation of even class periods. There will be scheduled extra help sessions as well. In terms of asynchronous learning opportunities, <clears throat> in terms of asynchronous learning opportunities, independent assignments will be given to check for student understanding, and there will also be opportunities to have flipped lesson components to maximize instructional times. If we are allowed to open with no restrictions, which is what I'm hoping for before June, uh, we return to a traditional building schedule. Folks, I've given you an awful lot, and I know it's a lot to try to absorb, and, and I, I, but I wanted to go through it, but please understand, I do, uh, um, I do wanna have time for questions. I, um, I list, as I said, um, I, I have a list of questions that have been asked. I wanna kind of go through those and then, um, uh, um, then open it up, open it up for questions to you all. And, and by doing so, what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to answer a lot of people's questions that they may have um, with regard to uh, with regard to the reopening. And so um, I'm gonna stop sharing this document and then we're gonna move to, uh, uh, to Q&A. Again, I would ask everyone to please um, mute your mute your microphones, uh, uh, and so that uh, there's uh, less interference um, in the background. Um, the first series of questions that I had had to do with remote instruction, um, and I guess the district um, the district uh, plan indicated that uh, students on remote instruction, full remote instruction, would be receiving instruction from a certified teacher. Um, and the question was, will that be their classroom teacher? The answer is yes, it will be their classroom teacher. Students who are on a full remote learning model, they have a, a, a they have a schedule of, of classes that they attend um, uh, that they attend each day. Uh, but um, uh, 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 they will be expected to be full remote. They will ex be expected to be attending class each day fully remotely, and um, that's how that will work. Um, and um, with regard to if a child starts, the question was asked, if a child begins the year on fully remote instruction, there will be one opportunity uh, to change full remote instruction to the hybrid model, and that will be at the conclusion of quarter number one, uh, the first marking period, okay? Um, and... Um, Another question this individual asked is how much live teaching will a student get on days that they receive remote learning? We'll get as much live teaching as the students in the class get because uh, the teacher will be uh, teaching to both the students in the classroom on any given day, as well as the students who are learning remotely. We have large screens, uh, uh, large screens in each classroom so that uh, students and teachers who, students who are present the teacher and the students who are learning remotely will all be able to interact each day. Um, the next question had to do with uh, students receiving materials. Yes, students will be receiving their tablets. They will be perhaps receiving textbooks. Um, the procedures for that will be as usual. Students will be receiving those materials here in school and um, uh, uh, 
the students will be uh, given time because of the staggered schedule of, uh, to, to obtain those materials. We won't be jumping into uh, massive amounts of course content um, on day one, believe me. Um, it's going to take some time for the students and the staff to learn the new routines here and the new procedures here at the high school. And that, that will be the focus of the first days of school. Um, and all classes, yes, again, the question was, all classes will be live streamed and, uh, um, and they will have their own classroom teachers each day. Uh, supplies, there may be supplies. We're working on that supply list. We do get that list out to uh, uh, parents so that uh, those supplies can be purchased. Um, you should be uh, uh, receiving that list certainly in the next week or so. Um, with regard to lunch, students will be allowed to go out for lunch. It is true that students may not be able to eat their lunch at the pizza place um, because of social distancing. But that's why we have both the large gym, the small gym, and the cafeteria available for students to use. Each day we will have about uh, between 425 and 450 students in the building. We have four lunch periods. Using those three large spaces, we do have room for everyone to sit socially distanced. That, we're fortunate to have that space for students to pick up lunch and return, um, return to school uh, to, to eat. Um, and please understand that the only time students are permitted to take their mask while in school is while they are sitting, eating their lunch. Other times while they're in the building, they have to wear their mask. Students in the high school, we have 10 minutes between classes. Students at the high school will, uh, uh, they have their lunch. They often have free time as well. And they have time they, with the 10 minutes between classes as the year progresses. I'm sure they will figure out a way to step outside to get a mask break if that's needed at all. Um, the next question has to do with um, ninth grade orientation and uh, the students in ninth grade getting a tour of the building. Um, ninth grade orientation this year is going to be a remote affair, albeit live. It'll be myself, Mr. Brescia, uh, assistant principal, Ms. Rossi, assistant principal, Ms. Mitchell, our guidance director, um, probably some others as well who will be giving the ninth graders their orientation program. Um, I, uh, I was hoping to be able to orientation live this year uh, because I think it, you know, it, it would be beneficial. Um, however, with regard to extracurricular activities, clubs, and large gatherings, we really are not able to do so. And, and therefore, yeah, right. Since we don't have nothing, if you could, if you could mute your microphone, please. For now, okay. We're just gonna. Um. I will be creating a, uh, a video of what the hallways are going to be looking like and, um, uh, uh, and, and walking the students through the building. And uh, because it's not just the ninth graders who are gonna be unfamiliar with this pattern. Um, and, uh, and I plan to have that video available. Right now, I, I don't have the ability to do so because um, you, right now I don't have the ability to do so simply because uh, there's a lot of areas of the building that are yet to be ready. Um, room 201 was taken apart this year. There's now a hallway that's that's been cut and a, and a conference room that's been made. Um, there are other areas of the building, including outside, outside my office, that have been under construction and remain uh, rather a mess. Um, the whole front staircase of the building is not ready yet because both the first floor and second floor um, uh, uh, have been have been construction sites in that area of the building, and once that that gets cleaned up, I'm going to be able to, to uh, uh, create that recording and and get that out to everybody so that people will be a little bit more familiar with procedures, with how uh, how the staircases will uh, will work, how the hallways will work, and um, in that way, everybody will have some familiarity with with the building moving into the start of school on September 8th. Um, 
I think I, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, students uh, will be attending Barry Tech. The next question had to do with Barry Tech. Um, there will be busing. Students who attend Barry Tech, they have to get on that bus at a particular time. And um, uh, teachers uh, will be made aware of the students who attend uh, Barry Tech and, uh, and allowances will be made for those students to be sure to get on those buses uh, at the times that they de do, at the times that they need to, both for the AM session and the PM session of BOCES, um, those are half-day programs each. Um, with regard to the next question, had to do with science lab, research lab, and research work. Um, I, I see a question pop up: When freshman orientation will be available? Uh, freshman orientation will be live streamed. On the day, I believe that it is Thursday, um, August 27th at 10 a.m. It's on the uh, district calendar. That's when uh, uh, orientation will, will, will take place. Um, with regard to science labs, I, um, I have a, a, a meeting scheduled with uh, Mr. Vesalico and Dr. Balekis because there's a lot of details with regard to science labs that may need to get uh, may need to get work, worked out, particularly if the uh, required number of minutes for labs is upheld and if students are are going to be uh, taking regents exams, we've got to figure out how to deliver those labs to students um, and, and without uh, without uh, the potential for cross contamination of, of uh, lab supplies and tools and such and and, and so forth, um, there is no field, there is no outdoor field um, available here at the high school, and therefore, uh, as I said earlier, PE classes will be taking place um, in classrooms, um, and uh, there will be. A, 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 both in class activities as well as as well as out of class activities and physical fitness logs that the students will be uh, uh, required to do. Um, I'm flipping through these questions um, with regard to um, with regard to the day to day operation of, of the high school um, and 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 uh, the A days and the B days. I want you to know that I've what has been created is a spreadsheet of A, B, A days and B days for each calendar day of the school year. So in addition to um, so in addition to the uh, district calendar that has that six day cycle, um, what will eventually be shared with students and staff and parents is the A and B cycle for those students on the hybrid learning model. And um, uh, uh, and and um, uh, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that uh, with regard to our six day cycle, what we are doing essentially is we're cutting the number of six day cycles during the school year in half. And uh, because um, it, it, we because we're we have an A and B day, a one A and a one B and a two A and a two B and so on, um, it really becomes a 12 day um, a 12 day cycle of classes rather than a six day um, rather than a six day cycle of classes. Um, with regard, the next question has to do with how do teachers cover remote and on-site learning at the same time? There will be a live feed in the, each classroom uh, 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 and uh, we do have more students in each classroom so that teachers will be able to interact with both the students who are and the students in the classroom. Um, Social distancing in the classrooms and the common areas in the bathrooms. Um, everybody's got a responsibility to maintain social distancing. In instances where social distancing cannot be maintained, um, uh, masks are worn, uh, are worn by everybody, and uh, masks need to be worn by everybody in the high school at all times. Why? It's the, A, it's the responsible thing to do, protecting yourself and you're protecting others. And um, as uh, in addition, um, in some instances, particularly in hallways and such, some of our hallways are going to be two-way hallways, and uh, we we can't guarantee that social distancing will be able to be maintained at all times within the building. Therefore, masks need to be worn. Uh, uh, the technology that uh, is going to be used for uh, for video calls is going to be Teams and WebEx predominantly. 
Um, and uh, um, right now, uh, the next question has to do with uh, class teachers who will be on site versus remote. Right now, we don't have any teachers who will be working remotely. All of our teachers, as I understand it, are, are currently planning to uh, come to school to uh, be with the students once again. They're as interested as the students are in uh, in 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 um, in seeing in seeing everyone uh, uh, once again. Um, with regard to the comfort level of uh, of people, the question next question had to do with the comfort level of people. Um, you know, with regard to remote learning, I think that the, the students' comfort level with remote learning varied greatly. Some students th uh, uh, thrived with remote learning. Other students really struggled with remote learning. And um, we're going to be paying particular attention to those students who struggled uh, during the remote learning experience that we had last spring. And um, uh, with regard to teachers, I think the teachers are uh, continuing to uh, become uh, more and more familiar with the variety of technologies that, that we have um, that are out there and they're sharing with one another. Um, and our, our learning management system, uh, Schoolology, will certainly help centralize a lot of material for uh, uh, students and teachers, uh, so that um, so that students do not look are not looking in multiple uh, places for the materials they need for their various classes. Um, the next question is uh, that's being asked is why students with an IEP. Um, all students with an IEP are going to school today. Um, essentially, uh, uh, that has to do uh, with that's two 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 things that that are in play there. Um, uh, number one, students with an IEP are not necessarily not succeeding um, in school, uh, particularly if they're in the uh, in uh, the ICT setting. Um, both the teacher and the classroom teacher will be uh, on screen every day. And um, secondly, uh, we have to be concerned with the number of people that are in the building at any given time. And uh, if we included all of the students with IEPs in the, in the building, uh, we we would have we're, we would have tremendous difficulty maintaining social distancing because it would increase the number of students in the building at any given time by about a hundred, and uh, that would that would be an untenable and an unworkable safety and health situation. Um, the next couple of questions had to do with um, SATs and ACTs and how schools are uh, are are looking at potentially. Uh, having SAT school days and ACT school days, which right now is something that um, we're discussing ourselves. And um, uh, our, our guidance director, uh, Ms. Mitchell, myself, Mr. Brescia, Mr. Sorosi, and Dr. Balekis, we've all been interacting and uh, we may be um, moving toward having an SAT school day setting, um, but uh, we have to work out the details of that, but we certainly will be keeping parents um, and students informed of that because it is uh, it is an important part of the next step after high school. Um, with the next question has to do with uh, updating the ventilation systems and uh, um, and air purification. I think uh, Dr. Balekis indicated last night in the meeting as well. Um, all of our classrooms are air conditioned. All of our major spaces are air conditioned as well. Um, the, the large and small gyms are air conditioned. However, the cafeteria is not air conditioned, but it does have windows that do open. Um, and uh, we will be using outside air as well as um, fresh air uh, settings on air conditioners to make sure that fresh air is, is coming into the uh, classrooms each period of every day. Um, um, and and uh, with regard, the next question has to do with uh, someone in either cohort A on an A day or someone in, in B on a B day um, in a particular class testing positive for, um, for COVID. At any, at any time when someone tests positive, um, what the first step that is taken by us is that we call the County Department of Health and the State Department of Health. We, we, we're required to do so, um, and we will be following their lead. Um, and um, uh, we, in following their lead, uh, 
Uh, there will be contact, contact tracing, and uh, as contact tracing takes place, there may be a need for students on both A and B days to self-quarantine, and that's why we have that attendance, uh, uh, that attendance procedure that we're looking into altering uh, to allow for remote instruction to continue because we know that there's going to be a variety of situations where um, uh, children may need to stay home, and, uh, but we want uh, instruction to be continuous, particularly for students who are feeling well but just need to, need to be home for a particular amount of time. Um, at any point, um, if there are uh, situations where siblings are exposed, uh, 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 or where siblings are potentially exposed to COVID, self-quarantining is going to be necessary. And again, that uh, uh, allowance for uh, continuous remote learning for people who are being quarantined is going to be be there. Um, I, if, as you know, if someone here in the building um, is uh, um, is infected and that infection is determined to be fairly widespread by uh, the Department of Health, we will be required to close for a minimum of 48 hours, 24 hours to let the uh, droplets settle and then 24 hours to have the building uh, cleaned um, from top to bottom. Um, There will be two entrances. Um, I think it was explained by last night by uh, Dr. Balekas as well as uh, uh, Dr. Lynch. Two entrances will be used um, for entering the building at the start of the day. Um, on Carpenter Avenue, one of the gym, uh, large gym entrances will be used by uh, students in grades 11 and 12. And then I've been assured that our courtyard entrance, which in no way looks like it's ready to be uh, used, is going to be ready to be used by the time school starts. Um, and so ninth and 10th graders will enter the building uh, via Union Avenue and the courtyard entrance, which is between the main part of the building and the banana wing. Um, after, the, uh, after students enter for the day, uh, we will revert back to having one entrance for security reasons, and that will be the courtyard entrance uh, to the high school. Um, students who are exiting for any reason will be using the courtyard entrance and then will head to one of the common rooms um, if uh, when they return to the building when they're free or uh, have a lunch period. Um, students, uh, quest, next question is uh, how do students carry around their belongings all day um, I, I, uh, with their backpack, computer, books, binders, etc.? I, I, I find it remarkable, uh, but the, the fact is that while we have a, uh, more than enough hallway lockers for every, um, uh, for every child, um, less than 20% of the lockers are used by the students. And um, students, uh, for, safety, for safety and health reasons, will be asked to uh, carry their belongings with them um, at all times. And, uh, um, it's just the way it's going to be for this year while we're dealing with this circumstance. Um, I know that um, a lot of, uh, because of um, things moving in the direction of going uh, more fully electronic uh, and, and handouts uh, being reduced as a result, uh, students will be carrying around uh, fewer, fewer things than we have in the past, including calculators. The only group of students who will be given a calculator will be the students. I think um, in uh, in eleventh grade they 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 still have their their calculators, but on each tablet there will be a uh, and there is an app installed that has a uh, TI eighty four calculator on right on the tablet. So there is no need to distribute calculators to any child. Um, there. Uh, <clears throat> The grade four to 12 learning management system is Schoolology. And when will uh, students and parents learn this new system? Teachers are currently just um, uh, taking workshops, learning that new system. Administration, including myself, we're, we're slated to, uh, uh, to be trained in it. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, there are plans in the works that I, maybe I missed it last night regarding 
uh, uh, regarding parent training and student training in, in Schoology as well. Um, as I mentioned before, with regard to lunch, lunch will be a grab and go uh, situation. And uh, um, uh, in, in terms of uh, my school bucks account, um, I'm gonna have to get back to you regarding that. I don't know if the school bucks accounts will be live uh, carrying up from middle school. It's my understanding they perhaps are, but I just wanna double check on that. Um, students will be sitting six feet apart at lunch. Um, and uh, um, as I mentioned before, the next question had to do with PE in the high school. Um, it's gonna be through a variety of, of, of means that PE will be delivered. Um, and uh, um, I think I, I, I did mention that. Um, uh, one of the areas that still needs to be addressed is our music program. I have a meeting on uh, tomorrow with the music staff for Pilata to discuss particulars regarding, as you heard last night and maybe know, that um, all music classes are really just lessons. Uh, the teachers of our ensembles, both chorus, concert choir, wind ensemble, orchestra, and, and, uh, and the symphonic band, those classes will be ongoing, but um, uh, with only half the students present any, in, on any given day, uh, details regarding how lessons will be delivered both uh, uh, to those students who are in attendance and to the, to the students who are at home. We need to work out those details and uh, we have that meeting tomorrow for that purpose. Um, the next question that was asked is, is if New York uh, states that there are three meetings with the community to discuss options and planning, um, why is it being mandated that decisions be made by tomorrow? Um, decisions need to be made so that uh, we can plan on opening. Um, and uh, we're trying to get as many meetings as possible um, in so to uh, help provide parents with information so that informed decisions can be made. Um, and um, The next question I have is if I choose to, uh, if I choose hybrid and I, I send my child back to school, but decide after a week or so that it is not working and want to have her on full remote, is that an option? That is an option for you. Um, that is an option for you. Uh, um, but um, uh, moving back and forth between uh, the hybrid model and remote. If you begin in hybrid and go remote, you're staying on remote. Um, and, uh, um, and that really is, it's a, it's a one, it's not a swinging door there and it's, uh, it's one way. And um, if you decide to make the decision to go full remote, you will be on full remote. Um, the next question has to do with free periods um, and, and why children's schedules are, uh, can't be condensed uh, that has to do with uh, the number of students that we have and the course requests that they make. Um, we have this long school day so that uh, our students can get the required courses and electives that we offer. And uh, they want their classes and we try to get them for them. Um, in doing so, and in order to accommodate all of the students, um, classes do get spread out during the course of the day and it's not always possible to condense a child's schedule excuse me got a cough <coughs> um, the next question has to do with the changing of classes we're going to have 10 minutes hallways will essentially be one way except for one or two hallways on the uh, second and third floors first floor as well and uh, that 10 minutes will allow them uh, allow the students to uh, get to uh, get to their next class. Um, students who leave the school for any reason, yes, they will need to go through that reentry procedure um, of being checked and and uh, um, and and uh, having their uh, temperature checked, as well as showing their student ID, as well as that green on on the app that uh, that we will be using uh, for students to answer that. Their, their daily questionnaire. Um, those are the questions that I I had. Um, 
And at this point, I guess what I want to do is I want to open up the floor to people. Um, <coughs> and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer your questions. Um, and if you could just uh, um, identify yourself so you know who I am, so that I know who you are, and uh, please feel free to uh, to ask any questions. Mr. Reynas? Yes. Hi, it's Jen Danker. Can you hear me? Yes, Jen, I can. Can I, you hear me? I just, thank you so much. This was informative. I just have a question. If the if Cuomo shuts the schools and we're all remote, why can't we just stay with the regular schedule that the kids will have every other day? Why do we have to disrupt it and change it to something else? I don't have a full answer for you. Um, I think this, when when the students um, were, were uh, learning remotely last spring, uh, one of the one of the issues that came up during that full remote period was how intense uh, being on that full remote was, and um, having that regular school day and and um, only being able to have that. Um, that instruction take place in in forty minute hits. Um, I think that it's going to be difficult on a full remote mode to have a lot of effective teaching and effective learning taking place because you're moving from moving from class to class, and if there's uh, if there's ten minutes between classes, it's not a lot of time for a teacher to to uh, change materials and 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 move on to the next thing. Um, and restructuring the day and having an, having five classes that are spaced out by an hour um, provides a regular schedule. And um, because we're on a full remote mode, I think it offers opportunities to flip the classroom. It offers opportunities for a mini lesson to be given for students to uh, then uh, be tasked with getting some work done, and then a period of feedback being able to be given. Um, I, uh, I think it's, I think it's, it, there, there, there are different modalities that are um, being used there, and um, the degree to which the asynchronous learning that took place last spring worked is question is questionable, and uh, um, and and. Having a regular routine is much, preferable, but I think it's also if we go fully remote, um, there isn't that regular contact, uh, and even the hybrid model that we have is going to offer that offer that regular contact with between students and teachers. And um, without that, I um, instruction gets more difficult. And so well, I, that there would be, I think, it, it, it's. Really I, I understand what you're saying, and for the spring it worked because they were told it was pass fail and there were no finals or regents. But if the schools close before October 1, let's say, they're getting a whole school's year. They have to get all of the material in in half the amount of time and then still take regents and AP exams at the end. So, you know, the things are good that cases are going to rise in September and we're going to shut down September 20th and then it's basically a full year of half the amount of uh, teaching. And I, I don't want to go back and forth and take up the time. I just wanted to, you know. I also think that if, I think that if that's, I just think that if that is the eventuality and we, and, and we're on that remote learning for, for an extended period of time, uh, what happened to regents exams is going to happen again. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I, it would be, the state would be hard pressed to say, um, we got it. We got to go with it. I think. I think it would be a very, very difficult decision for them to make. They'd be putting students under the gun. Then, good morning, Ms. Arenas. Good morning. How are you? Doing well, thanks. 
Thanks for, uh, thanks for, thanks for, thanks for coming. <laughs> You're welcome. I have a quick question for you. Do you have an estimate um, amount of attendance that's going to be in the classroom? Like the amount of kids are going to appear? Do you have an estimate to let us know? Like because you said social distancing with the classrooms. Do you know how much? Well, not yeah. Part part of the reason why students need to wear masks is, is because in in we can't um, social distancing of six feet not necessarily going to be able to be maintained in each in each classroom okay and when we do our splits a to l m to z which we have while many sections work out well there are some sections where things are a little unbalanced um, okay. we would have to we would have to rearrange all children's schedules in order to have those splits become even and, and children would begin to lose out on electives that they right. and so um we're asking everybody to please wear those masks they'll have those those screens as well and um i think we'll be okay i think we'll be okay um, we're certainly cognizant of the number of students um who are opting to go fully remote um, okay. And we're adjusting our class sizes accordingly. Um, okay. Right now, right now we're in a pretty good spot. We're in a pretty okay. good. Spot. I won't say we, I won't say it's ideal because this whole situation is less than ideal. But okay. but but it's um it's it's responsible and it's reasonable in in nearly every classroom. Okay. Okay. Uh, what also about um the. Music department. How is that going to work for the kids and Nisma and stuff like that? Yeah, with regard to I, I, with regard to Nisma and so forth, I. But um, as I said, I'm, I have a meeting tomorrow morning with all of our music teachers and Mr. Pallada, and uh, there are lots of details regarding our our chorus classes. Um, and our, our band classes and, and orchestra that need to be worked out. And um, as soon as I am able to put together details regarding that, I yeah. sure will be sending um, will be sending something out to everybody. Okay, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you. You're welcome. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm still a student. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to see you. Yeah, I'm, I wanted to see what what's happening. So, I was wondering. I'm going back with the hybrid model. So, I'm wondering if is it like a double period, a double period, single period, single period, like different days? You know what I'm talking about. You know how you would no, normally alternate between two days, like with a double period, or is it going to be like day one, day one, and then a day two, and then a day two? Correct. Correct. Right. It's going to be day one, day one, day two, day two. Yeah, just making sure. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Reynas, Liz Barco here. Hi. Hello. Thank you for all of this. Um, just a question about what is expected of the parents and the students prior to entering the building. You mentioned we're taking the temperature, students, how are we doing that? Is that a question there? Can you explain that? Yeah, it's a, yep, yeah, it's it's really it's a shared it's a shared responsibility. I mean, um, we we Sending healthy children to school each day is is what we we all want to do, and so checking temperatures at home, checking symptoms at home is important before children come. When children arrive at school, there's going to be an app that the children are going to get um, that's going to allow them to answer a questionnaire every day, and when they when they when they complete that questionnaire, it's a symptomatic questionnaire. Um, and, a, and, a, uh, and a people they've been in contact with questionnaire. And when they respond to that questionnaire, if they respond that, oh yes, I've been in contact with people who have COVID, well, it's today's the day to stay home. Um, and uh, what they have to what they have to do it, it, it is it will show um, it will show green or red. red. And therefore people will be able to um, uh, our our um, our monitors at the door will be looking for a school ID. There'll be uh, temperature screening, and they will be looking for the green screen as well as students come in during during the course of the morning, and okay. anytime during the day. 
Okay. All right. Thank Hi, you. Mr. Yep. Hi, Mr. Reynas. Um, my name is Lisa Godley. Um, Hi, Mr. Godley. How are you? Having a good time with the pandemic. <laughs> anyway, I. Uh, Last night, the board meeting was excellent, and uh, they mentioned that there's going to be a new uh, program that we're going to all get trained on, MLS or something. Some. Yeah, it's called Schoology, oh. and it's a, a learning learning management system. Um, right. and like I mentioned a little while ago, the teachers are, are receiving training in that in it now, um, and uh, there are two different trainings. There's a level one and a level two that they're participating in. I have yet to be trained in it. Um, okay. Administrators administrators are going to be receiving training in it prior to the opening of school. And right. as I mentioned, I think I'm sure that plan works to have uh, parents trained um, and certainly students trained as well. I just yeah. don't know the details of it myself. Um, my question was, is it possible for the children to get like a um, some sort of a review to know what's going to be coming up that week, like an agenda, so they know what the teacher is going to say. Because this is going to be challenge to do this whole. Mm -hmm. thing. So yeah, you know, us. one of the one of the things as I mentioned before, Schoology is going to um, help centralize work um, right. agendas, uh, lesson plans, and so forth. And therefore, I think it will be a it will be a useful tool um, for um, particularly for students who um, struggled going from email to OneNote and to the various apps that that were used during the course of uh, of last spring. Um, this is going to be much more of a uh, of a uh, centralized way of uh, disseminating information and getting work out in, uh, to students. One last question. Um, how have you figured out what to do for the class sizes, you know, in case kids have questions during the class, because remote kids are going to be calling in and kids might be in the classroom? Well, the, the, um, the students who are learning remotely on any given day will be able to uh, raise their hand. And I, I know that in uh, um, there's a hand raising feature. Um, <laughs> In the, in the programs that uh, that we use, and um, um, there will be times when um, there will be times when all of the students will be in discussion. Um, so if if all of the children who are home, their faces are on the large screen, and and then the students are in class, with their, there can be class discussion taking place, and uh, that's that that's what we're that's what we're aiming that's what we're aiming toward is having that kind of interaction taking place. Okay, and you're preparing in case we all shut down and you have to close the school building, like. Yeah, we have we have okay. alternate plans for that as well. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. Hi, Mr. Reynas, it's Mrs. Grillo. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you so much for this informative session. Um, I just want to know we have a rising senior, so how are we going to make this year amazing for them? And also extracurricular activities and clubs. How are we going to do that? I know yesterday they said they were going to be virtual, but I'm wondering because we're dealing with, um, you know, our teenagers, and I'm sure they can be adults. Is there any way we can? Um, how are we going to do that? How are we going to have extracurricular activities and clubs for the children? One of the things I didn't show you at the bottom of at the bottom of my reopening plan was my list of things to be addressed, and one of them was music. <laughs> One of them was athletics. Um, one, another one was uh, clubs and activities. And um, I, um, I don't have that. I don't have an absolute answer for that right now. Um, simply because uh, I've, I've got to talk to the teachers and um, I, I've got to talk to the, uh, the, the activity moderators, see how they believe uh, things can can work. Um, you know, it's, it's it's funny. So many of our our, organi our our student groups are community service oriented, and then um, in addition to being community service oriented, they they really work at at, um, at at organizing and holding and sponsoring large events for the students of the school. And we're not allowed to have any large events. So, um, <laughs> so uh, there there a bit of a redefinition 
of some of uh, what it is they're they're going to be able to get done that's going to need to take place. And um, I don't have a solid answer for you right now. Um, in terms of in terms of making the year fantastic for the members of the class of 2021. Yay. Let's make sure we're we're staying responsible and uh, and able to, to come to come to school because um, otherwise we got to go remote and that won't be any fun. And coming to school is much more fun than not. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. <laughs> but um, as 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 I get more information regarding clubs, activities, et cetera, I certainly will be sharing it. Excellent. Maybe we can have a subcommittee for um, you know for those parents with uh, you know 2021 members because again we want to make sure that this is an amazing year for them. So that could be happy, of, happy to uh, happy to be part of anything like that. Sounds perfect. Thank you again. Be safe and be well. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Rain. It's Andrea Goldstein. Hi. How are you, Andrea? Hello. Good. How are you? I call Andrea by her first name, everybody, because uh, we grew up <laughs> two doors from one another. That's right. And I, and I would like to call you Joe if that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, just a quick question about um, the college meetings. A lot of the juniors didn't have them last year uh -huh. because of the close down. Now, will they be able to schedule college meetings in the fall, either remotely or in in person, with their guidance counselors? I would imagine. I would. I would. I would say yes to that question. I would okay. say yes to that question. I think that's a that's a yeah. If those if those college meetings did not take place, they they do need to take place. I certainly will. Have to consult with Ms. Mitchell and the guidance counselors. Okay. But sounds like Ms. something Mitchell that we is got to work here, out. And, and yes, that is something that we're planning to do. I wasn't aware that that uh, people didn't have junior meetings. I know that there was a lot of outreach for parents to be able to take part of those junior meetings. So if that didn't happen, certainly that needs to happen for the seniors. But that's going to be happening for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Be well. Yep. Good to see you too. Hi, Mr. Reynas. Hello. This is Joanna Santoli. I have a son, uh, Nathan, in 10th grade. How are you? Um, first of all, I just want to really thank you for what comes across really as very genuine empathy and concern. Um, I don't always see that in this district, and it's really nice to see it from you. Um, I do want to reiterate, though, what Jen Danker brought up in regards to this all remote option. Um, you know, it's just completely unacceptable for me, the plan for whether or not we all have to go remote. I think it sounds a lot like what happened in the spring. Um, which for me, wasn't um, wasn't very much and wasn't acceptable. I just I don't understand the logic that keeps getting put out about why that's the all remote plan. It's still not really making sense to me because on one hand, we are agreeing as a district that this green model, if we were to choose it, is acceptable. You know, these kids who are going to choose at the high school level to get remote instruction, 10 periods a day with 10 minutes in between, we're saying that's okay, that that's an option. But then if we're all forced to be remote because, you know, the world shuts down again, somehow we are saying that that's no longer a good option, that now we need um, you know, more time in between or that, um, you know, teachers can't do it 10 days. Um, I just don't really understand that logic. And, you know, honestly, it just sounds like it was a plan that was made a few months ago before we knew what we knew now. And it sounds like to me that it's uh, a fight with the union, quite honestly, that for some reason the district isn't willing to take up. Um, and I think it's at the expense of our kids. Um, and I was really starting to feel better about the plan until I heard that last night and realized that when the real possibility that we're home again comes, I'm going to be back to feeling like I did in, in the spring. And, you know, whether the regions are canceled or not, quite honestly, I want my kids to be learning. Um, whether they have to be tested on that by, by the Board of Regents or not, you know, that's kind of secondary. I want them to be walking away with an education. Otherwise, you know, I can put them to work and maybe uh, pay off my mortgage a little quicker. So I just really hope that, you know, whether you're stating it here or not, I really hope that this is a, um, 
a plight that you take up because I think it's a real concern for parents and I think it, it's going to be the situation we're in. I think we're going to get there and and then we're all going to be bitching about what's happening and it's going to be too late to, uh, to do it. So that's my piece. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, I, I will share. I will share the uh, uh, the thoughts. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. I hear you. Hello. Hello. It's Jennifer Fucci. Hi. How are Can you? Can you hear me? Hi. I came to. Sorry, I lost you. Can you Can you hear me? I I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Um. What was the name? Now I think I lost you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, just simply to talk, to see, I'm going to get the information um, on the hybrid model where the student will click the Zoom in the class. Where they would get. me right right i think that 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 um, yeah that that i'm sure that as the school year begins teachers will be emailing their their students um about oh. how to how to log in to uh sessions um, on a daily basis and it will become eventually it will become a um um a part of the um routine the class the regular class routine i don't see it i don't see it as something that will be difficult um unless i'm somehow misunderstanding what it is, is you're you're trying to describe no i was just i overheard something there, will there platform called something with the word school in it um oh yeah app? i'm sorry i just came to the call sure it's a it's a it's it's a learning management system and what it does is it kind of takes it takes um, lesson plans. It takes assignments, communication between students and 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 their teachers, and kind of centralizes it. And rather than rather than um, some teachers using email as their primary form of communication, um, or OneNote as their primary form of collecting work and sending out assignments, Schoology kind of centralizes it, and it becomes the place where lessons are shared, where work is distributed, and where assignments are handed in. And there's kind of a record of it for teachers and for students and for parents. And it's and it's a central model rather than things that are kind of uh, uh, piecemeal. We'll get this information later on or they'll have it on their phone. It's an app or you just it's a website. <laughs> It, it'll be it'll be uh, from what I understand it'll be something that will be on their um on their tablets. It may there may be an app as well. I I just don't know myself. Good question. Okay. Anybody else? Hi, Ms. Hi, Mr. Renes. My name is Dina Weiss, and I'm a parent of an incoming ninth grader, and I really appreciate this meeting. I'm looking forward to working with you over the next four years. Um, my child is in um, the B group, so how are they going to be informed how to log on on day one? And also, I don't know if you already said this, how will he get his computer for day one if he's not in the building on day one? Well, he will get his he will get his computer on day one, but because we have uh, two day ones, um, you know, it's 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 a, it's an elongated day one, and um, uh, um, material it's going to take longer to distribute materials certainly, and uh, um, and we have to also work out procedures for students who are uh, on full remote to pick up this those same materials, and so all of that is going to take some time. But as I said, the first days of school um, are really going to be an, a, an adjusting period. Um, I'm concerned about a number of things. 
certainly, certainly the uh, uh, the general uh, students following the general procedures, the new procedures of the school. That's one concern. But beyond that, it's really uh, helping students adjust socially um, <laughs> to a certain of being in school that they haven't been in since March. And I think that that's going to be a little bit more of an adjustment uh, for uh, uh, a lot more of the kids than 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 you might think at first. Um, we might find that we might find some kids that uh, that uh, are going to come to school and find that they're not they're not doing well. So I want to have a I want to have a good adjustment period where we're focused on the students uh, getting getting familiar with the new routes and procedures uh, in school, but also gives our teachers and our support staff time to identify kids who. Um, might be struggling <laughs> as a result of kind of coming back to school because people react to uh, to events in different ways. And um, I think that there'll be time for the distribution of class materials. And um, um, uh, please, please uh, communicate with me if you find that you are unable to uh, access something. Um, I will I will work to straighten that out as quickly as I can. Mr. Reynas? Yeah. It's Bill Belmont. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. All right. So I just want to clarify and not get into a conversation, but to, to provide you with extra information. One of the, and, and it's come up several times in your presentation, which has been very comprehensive. And as a parent, I appreciate it. But just to give some extra information so people can be a little bit more relaxed, the remote learning plan that's being referred to was one that was worked out with the teachers prior to us coming up with this blue and green plan. That is being visited with the teachers. So the opportunity that is not, um, how should we say, um, in stone right now. So the opportunity that is being revisited to see what the best plan could be for all involved should we end up in a fully remote. So hopefully that brings some relief and some understanding that it's still being looked at. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. That's great. Thanks, Mr. Belmont. Ms. Anis? <clears throat> yes, me. It's Celeste McDonald. Um, I have I have twins coming in in September in a few weeks. Um, so first of all, I have one who has a first period class, and the other one starts second period. I will have to get to work. So can I drop them both off? Will my other my daughter who has a second period class have a place to hang out in the gym or the cafeteria while waiting for her class to start? Yep, sure can. Okay. Great, thank you. And just to clarify for that first day, the very first day, September 8th, is it still September 8th? Yes. Um, and so we start the second day, I guess, um, you know, in person. So that first day, I think somebody had just asked the question, they won't have their tablet yet, correct? That first day of school on September 8th. So the second half of the alphabet, what are they doing that first day? Is that a day off still? Is that? You know, what is that happening day one? Absolutely, you know, that's a day. right. That's a that's a great question, and I've been I've been uh, passing Mr. McDermott. As you know, he's the uh, uh, coordinator of uh, district technology and curriculum. And um, I, every time I pass his his office, I get yelled at because I need to speak with him about how we're going to distribute these tablets. And um, um, it's a question that has come up. I, I see what it is you're saying, um, and it's got to get addressed. Um, I'll let you know, and I'll let okay, it. Great. Thank you, and thank you again for graduation. Oh. It worked out perfectly. Thank you so it much. Worked, yeah, it was it was fun. I think I think we should have it at the beach every year. I do <laughs> want to go. <swim. laughs> thank you, uh, <laughs> Mr. Rena. Yes. Hi, Courtney. Somebody. How are you? Very good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, good to see you. My question is, I know some students just have days where they're feeling off and they need that mental health day or, you know, they're just not feeling good. They're under the weather and they stay home. If that's the case where they're able to function, are they allowed to remote in or once the nurse is contacted, they're out? Is it are, the for the day off? We, there's going to be a variety of, of situations that come up during the course. The year. We have essential workers who um, are coming in contact with any number of people every day, and there might be a cause for them to have to self quarantine with their family for a period of time. Th those people should be able to remote in. 
Um, what you're describing is a situation where a child not feel well, um, may, may need um, to take the day off, but would like to be able to participate remotely. What we're working on right now, myself, Dr. Bolekis, um, Mr. Fallon, and Ms. Ganon at the middle schools, we're working on kind of a, an, an adaptation of our attendance policy to allow for that, because okay. it is happening. And, and okay. we'll have that hammered out and the details of it, because I, I said, I want this in writing. I don't want it to be something that is verbal and I want it to be uniform. So once we have that, we'll be able to get that to you so that everybody everybody is aware. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Hello. Hello, hi. Hi, this is Josiane Doradis. I'm new to the uh, community and I'm just a little curious regarding the PE. So I understand that the PE is going to be less physical than we've normally done it in the past, but the students are required to maintain a log. So for those students who will be in school full time, are they too required to maintain a log or will that already be a part of their curriculum because they're in school every day? I think that it will be adapted as, um, as, as is appropriate to the group of learners. And, and I say that because um, in, any, in any PE class, there's a, there's a variety of abilities and a variety of strengths, and our and our PE teachers um, need to be cognizant of that. They're trained in being cognizant of that, and um, um, I think that the logs, what what those logs do, is um, are a way for teachers to say to their children, to their students, at home, practice these these yoga uh, uh, positions. Um, and and log when you did it, or practice these uh, these strength uh, uh, building uh, techniques, um, you know, either by planking or you know whatever. And so those activity logs are a way for students to work at physical fitness while being away from school, but have a record of their being able to maintain that that routine. Because uh, one of the things that the uh, physical education and health teachers do is really try to help build within the students um, healthy lifestyles and activities that are um, that that can be lifelong and 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 if they develop into this then they're developing excellent habits for later in life and uh, that's really the purpose behind those logs okay but um the log though is for those students who are on the hybrid model you mentioned that for the students that are in the special education program they will be in school every day unlike the hybrid model so for those students they would not be maintaining a log correct or really their parents wouldn't be maintaining a log for them i just want to be sure i understand that right right um i think that I think that's a question I would need to get back to you on, um, you know, and and uh, it might be it might be specific to your uh, your situation and your child, um, but um, I was describing it in a more uh, yes, I was describing it in a more general fashion, but uh, I certainly can can get back to you on that. Okay, and by the way, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Are there any other questions? Hi, Mr. Anus. This is Kelly Stapleton. I do have a question. Hi, Mrs. Stapleton. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Can you just tell us? I'm confused with what you said about what special ed students will go to the school. Which special education students will be in school? Full time. Understand. Okay. <sighs> The students who will be in school full time are students who have an IEP and also may be in one or more special classes. 
self-contained class, as well as the students who um, are in the career development program. Okay, so when I filled out the survey, I did not, that's not really an option for me. Can you be contacted by the school if it is an option for your child if they fall in this category? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what, what you just said real oh. well. It broke okay. up on me. Um, we got it, you know how we had to enter the survey and say what we want our student to do, our child? Right. I'm going to go a little louder, sorry. Maybe it's my phone. But so you just had the two options. It was the hybrid or the, you know, stay at home. So how do you know if your child, you know, will someone contact me if my child falls into that category? That's what I'm curious. Um, I don't know if someone would, but I certainly, I certainly can, I certainly can, uh, can look to see if that can happen, if that's what you're, you're looking to have happen for people. Well, I guess I, from what I heard last night and then today, it is confusing. So, and I'm not going to go into specifics about my child, but it's not just they have an IEP because that's what you said there when you would have too many kids in the school, right? Well, yeah, it's it's not just chill. It's not children with just an IP. It's children who are in special class, meaning self-contained, and one one or more self-contained classes. As and, and in addition, um, students who are in the CDP program. Okay, so that really cuts it. All right, that answers my question. Because okay, I'm sorry. What I thought you were saying. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, it's Joanne Huffine. Um, Hi. I was just wondering, are there any classes that are not available this year that have been available in the past due to COVID, like cooking classes or just because my son's schedule showed up and he's got like four free periods. So obviously something isn't right there. I uh, I would have to take a look at it. I, 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 if you could if you could um, send me an email, let me take a look at it. I'll look at it specifically. I I, I I'm trying to think of uh, classes that are not running. I don't I don't know of many that are not okay. running because of COVID. Okay, thank you. Okay, I appreciate your help. Hi, my name is Donna Marino. Can you hear me? Yep, you're kind of uh, cutting in and out a little bit. I just wanted to know, um, should we have received the schedule yet? Um, well, what happened is um, there, wa uh, there was a, a on one of, the, I think on uh, July 31st, I put out a, uh, a weekly update. And in that weekly update uh, was the notification that on the uh, portal in Paris School was open so that student schedules were observable. So it's not that the schedules were sent home. It's just that when you can you can log into Paris School and you can see your child's schedule. And there's also instructions there regarding um, regarding uh, requesting a schedule change. Okay, because this is also our first year attending, so I'm not familiar with the Power School yet um, portal. Okay, I'm I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that is how you would do it, and I think that. Uh, if you need a hand with that, um, please um, reach out to me at uh, at the high school eight eight seven zero two zero five, and uh, we can uh, we can take care of. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Sure thing. Hi, Mr. Rannis. It's Kelly Teffley. Hi, Mrs. Teffley. How are you? Good, thank you. Just Good. a question, um, because I was hearing just different things regarding masks. Is there a specific mask that is recommended or um, or are there ones that are not allowed? Um, I know like my son's been wearing the neck gaiter, but now I'm I just read an article that said it's not as reliable. So I know it's like a personal thing, but I didn't know if like cloth masks or yeah, surgical masks. The 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 uh, 
Well, I see a lot of people wearing wearing the gator, you know, because they're 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 easy to pull down. They're fa they're fashionable and uh, they pass for a mask. But I don't know if they are actually effective at stopping um, the droplets um, from uh, from from being spread. And I don't know how effective they are at uh, preventing somebody from inhaling droplets. I I'm I I kind of agree with that article. I don't know if they're they're that great. I think I think that. Um, I, I think that people are going to wear a variety of masks. Um, my, my hope is that people are wearing masks that are effective at uh, keeping themselves and others healthy. Um, I don't have I don't have an absolute um, answer to you. Um, I, I know that even those those paper three ply masks are are um, are pretty effective at uh, preventing that 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 spread. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Well, if there's no one else, I'm going to I'm going to say uh, thank you very, very much for coming out. Uh, we had uh, quite a number of people come out today and um, I will be stopping the recording. The recording will process, and then I will be making that recording available. Um, and uh, it'll be up at the uh, up at the high school site and at the district site, so that uh, so that people can uh, can get information. Um, and uh, um, and if if anybody has any questions, please feel free to call the high school. The general number is eight eight seven zero two hundred, and my direct line. Is eight eight seven zero two zero five. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a beautiful Thursday. Uh, stay safe.